A day later and firefighters are still working to figure out what led up to a fire that destroyed a Lexington home. We talked to a woman who lives nearby. She tells us what she saw and what she heard. Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton plan their next moves as the dust settles from Tuesday night's primary. I'm Craig Boswell at the White House. Also had the latest on the presumptive GOP nominee. Rain's really starting to taper off and move on. That will actually have a mainly dry afternoon. And then we jump toward tomorrow. Tomorrow looks great, but you better enjoy while it lasts. Much more rain is on the way. I'll show you when coming up. This is WQIT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WQIT News. I'm Bill Bryant, and we're glad you're with us today. And I'm Barbara Bailey. There's increased security at three Central Kentucky school distri districts today after a possible threat. Police say a man called a crisis hotline and made a comment about Sandy Hook, prompting schools in Mercer and Anderson counties to add extra patrols as a precaution. WKYT Sean Moody is in Harrodsburg right now with the latest, and that is our top story at noon. Sean? Hey there, Bill and Barbara. A deputy at the Mercer County Sheriff's Office told me the incident has now been resolved. He said the person who made that call has been found and will be evaluated. The deputy said this incident put three school systems into a higher security mode, Mercer County Schools, Bergen Schools, and Anderson County Schools. According to a Facebook post from the Mercer County School District, someone in Mercer County called the Lexington Height Crisis Hotline and at some point during the conversation made some kind of a reference to Sandy Hook. Now, Sandy Hook was the name of the elementary Elementary school where 26 students and staff were killed in the shooting a few years back. The deputy said this person never made any specific threat against a person or a school, but part of their protocol is to increase school security as a response. They did that as the situation continued, and when they located the person and determined there wasn't a threat, returned their security to normal levels. Now, the deputy said the person who made that comment on the crisis hotline has not been charged with any kind of a crime and will be evaluated. Live in Mercer County, Sean Moody, WKYT. Anderson County Schools said there was no connection with the threat to them, but they did take precautions because it involved a neighboring school district. Investigators remain at the scene of a house fire in Lexington this afternoon. The huge fire destroyed one home and spread to four others on Stansbury Cove near Jacobson Park yesterday. Firefighters say because the homes are built so closely together, it caused the flames to spread very quickly. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner has reaction from a neighbor whose home was damaged. Caitlin? Fire crews are still working to find out what caused a massive fire on Tuesday at this home on Stansbury Cove in Lexington. We talked to a woman who lives directly behind it. She tells us she was frightened by what she heard and then by what she saw. A home completely destroyed after it went up in flames Tuesday afternoon. Officer Don flew over it and captured this video. On the ground, firefighters said the scene was chaotic. Crews never left. Overnight, they kept an eye out for hot spots. But investigators returned first thing Wednesday morning to find the cause. Meanwhile, neighbors are still shocked. Four homes were damaged during the blaze. Alexandra Palos was at home in her office when she says she heard a loud noise. I heard a clanging, and my dogs started barking really badly. And um, one was just sitting at the window barking incessantly. and. I I thought either like the neighbor's cats had maybe knocked something over and then I got a little nervous that maybe somebody was trying to break in and then within another couple of minutes I heard a large boom and the whole inside of our house was orange. Fire investigators told her if the weather conditions had been any different on Tuesday her home and the neighboring homes would have also gone up in flames. In Lexington, Caitlin Sentner, WKYT. Now, fire crews are still working to determine the cause. One of three men accused of holding up a Lexington bank will face a judge in less than an hour. Ramis Woods is charged with robbery. He'll be arraigned at 1 o'clock. Police say he and two other men robbed City National Bank last week. The two other suspects are still on the run this midday. Well, Democrats Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton split the vote in two states holding primaries Tuesday, Oregon and, of course, here in Kentucky. Clinton won here last night in a razor-thin margin, beating Sanders by just 1,900 votes. Craig Boswell has the latest now from the campaign trail. I am 
getting to like the West Coast. Bernie Sanders celebrated his win in Tuesday's Oregon primary while campaigning in front of thousands in Carson, California. The Vermont senator insists he's the best candidate to take on Donald Trump. Before we will have the opportunity to defeat Donald Trump, we're going to have to defeat Secretary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is the likely winner in Kentucky's primary, where she narrowly defeated Sanders. Clinton took to Twitter, declaring her victory and made an appeal to Sanders supporters calling for unity. Her claim to the nomination got stronger Tuesday. She's now just 90 delegates short of clinching the nomination. Donald Trump also won in Oregon Tuesday. With no more opponents to challenge him, he shifted his focus to repairing his image, which took a beating during the primary process. During an interview with Megyn Kelly on Fox, the businessman says he has regrets about things he's said and done, but he's not really sorry. I could have maybe used different language uh, in a couple of instances, but overall, you know, I have to be very happy with the outcome. And I think if I didn't conduct myself in the way I've done it, I don't think I would have been successful. Trump will work on his foreign policy credentials today when he meets with former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. And Clinton and Sanders each received 27 delegates from Kentucky. One uncommitted delegate and five superdelegates from the state will be decided at the national convention in July, though those superdelegates are in large measure committed to Clinton at this point. The Attorney General's office says there were 76 calls to the election fraud hotline regarding the Kentucky primary. Those calls were from 31 counties. The subject of the calls included procedural and legal questions, poll disruption, and vote buying. About a third of those calls were from Jefferson County. There were nine calls to the voter hotline in Fayette County. Of the five calls from Breathitt County, four of them were about vote buying. The Attorney General's office says by law, it cannot comment on possible pending investigations. A voter turnout in Kentucky was right where it was projected to be. The Secretary of State's office says 20 percent of Kentucky's more than 3 million registered voters cast ballots in yesterday's primary. The State Board of Elections will certify vote totals for the primary election on May 31st. And you can find complete election results on WKYT.com or by downloading the WKYT News app. Most of the rain that we had earlier this morning has moved on out of the bluegrass here at midday, and it is giving us a much-needed break for now. Enjoy that while it lasts, because more showers and storms are in the forecast later in the week. <laughs> WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live in our First Alert Weather Center with a look ahead. Micah? Yeah, we're kind of ready for that break in the action. We're going to get that the rest of the afternoon as this rain continues to fade. The actual bulk of it is now across the mountainous region, still the backside of that, bits and pieces of some light showers, but We'll see that fade here in the next couple of hours. I spoke about it this morning. Down in southeast, around 2 p.m. is when you expect this to really fall apart. And then we'll start to see some breaks in the action of the clouds. Clouds not really helping us rise that much with the temperatures. It's 58 degrees now in Frankfort, 55 in Lexington and London Corbin area, and also Jackson and Breathitt County, southeastern Kentucky. You guys will be hard pressed to actually break that 60 degree reading later on this afternoon. So I'd say anywhere from about 58 to about 68 is where we can expect our temperatures today. It's a better afternoon. The focus of the forecast, let's just focus on some of these dry days for once, right? And I'm going to show you how long we hold on to the dry weather coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you then in Kentucky. He is losing one of its highly touted players after just one season. Forward Charles Matthews has announced he is transferring from UK. Our Dave Baker is live with more on his decision and reaction from Coach Cal. Dave? Hey guys, as John Calipari said, it hasn't happened often in his career, but much like Kyle Wilcher did successfully, Charles Matthews is now leaving UK. It's a desire for a larger role in a team scheme and not necessarily unhappiness with anyone or anything at UK. A school making it official and a mid-morning release announcing that Matthews was granted a full release to transfer with no restrictions. The freshman from Chicago, Matthews, was one of four Wildcats to play in all 36 games for UK during the 15-16 season. He averaged 1.7 points and one point six rebounds per game. In a statement, he thanked Wildcat fans and said, quote, Kentucky will always hold a special place in my heart, end quote. Much more coming on that in just a little bit. Thank you, Buzz. And from leaving to possibly joining the team, five-star center Marquise Bolden is expected to announce his college choice between Kentucky and Duke tomorrow at DeSoto High School near Dallas. 
Well, some of Lexington's best musicians will gather tonight to honor the life of a music icon. A tribute concert celebrating the music of Prince will be held this evening at Manchester Music Hall. The show is free to the public, but you must be 21 or older to attend. Doors open at 7 o'clock. All right, some memorable music to be played there. And an important new rule for overtime pay will take effect later in the year. Find out how it will impact millions of U.S. workers. That's coming up on Kentucky's number one. On midday news. Also ahead, the Garth Brooks concert promised to be a night a Michigan couple wouldn't forget, and oh, baby, it sure was. We'll have their incredible story next on WKYT. Welcome back to WKYT News at Noon. More than 4 million U.S. workers will become newly eligible for overtime pay under rules to be issued today by the Obama administration. The White House says employers must pay overtime to workers making a salary of less than $47,476. The change will go into effect on December 1st of this year. Some employers criticize the move, saying it is too drastic. But the Obama administration says it is a way to restore and expand the middle class. President Obama is threatening to veto a bill that would provide more than $600 million to fight the Zika virus. The bill was introduced by Republican Congressman Hal Rogers of Kentucky. But it would only provide a third of the resources requested by the president. The White House, is, uh, that is the uh, House in, on Capitol Hill, is planning to vote on the bill this afternoon. And the Senate has already voted on a $1.1 billion measure to fight the Zika epidemic. Bill Cosby and Hugh Hefner have been named in a sexual battery lawsuit. 26-year-old Chloe Gowan says she went to a party at the Playboy Mansion in 2008, accepted a drink from Cosby, and then woke up naked with her toes in Cosby's mouth. Gowan says she started to feel ill after sipping the drink, and Hefner suggested she go lie down. After Cosby escorted her to a private room, Gowen says she blacked out and isn't sure what happened after that. Cosby and Hefner are facing charges of sexual battery and conspiracy to commit sexual battery. I'll talk about a night you'll never forget. A Michigan woman went into labor at a Garth Brooks concert. Jacob Bickler and his pregnant fiance Emily had a scheduled C-section on Monday and decided to enjoy their last free night before the baby came Saturday night at the show. That's where it came at Grand Rapids. But then Emily started having contractions. And by the time Garth finished his final encore around 2 o'clock in the morning, it seemed their son was ready to make his debut. Just before 5.30 a.m., they welcomed little Jackson to the world. Both mom and baby are healthy and doing well, and I assume the father as well. There you go. Story ends well, and uh, he uh, made his debut, didn't he? Very memorable. <laughs> right. Yes. That, what a way to do it. Fallen Kentucky officer Blake Tribby was honored today. We'll take you to his memorial coming up. Some little rain over toward east and southeastern Kentucky. That will fade away by about 2 p.m. And then we're going to see dry conditions the rest of the afternoon. And off into your Thursday looks great. But enjoy while it lasts. Here comes some rain on Friday. I'll have that coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Still bits and pieces of showers out and about. It's not a lot, but it's still there over toward east and southeastern Kentucky. If you are trying to get out and make any plans, head out and do any errands throughout the rest of the afternoon, just take off. None of this is going to really cause many issues and really not going to bother you all that much. A couple of sprinkles, a passing light shower, that's about it. But right now, if you just watch it, it's fading. It's losing a lot of esteem. So I'd say. Just take off and enjoy the rest of the day. 51 degrees there in Jackson. And even when that rain fades, the low clouds that you see out toward east and southeastern Kentucky, they're kind of lifting here in Lexington and the Bluegrass region. But the low clouds, you're still going to get a little drizzle out of that. So even when the rain does fade, possible drizzle patches here and there, east and southeastern Kentucky, through the rest of the afternoon. None of these areas are going to be great looking days. You'll have clouds laying around, temperatures. They're going to be hard pressed to actually dive deep into the 60s. Some of us will actually stay in the upper 50s, especially the farther east and southeast you are. But uh, if you go into the bluegrass, you go northbound, get bits and pieces of sunshine here and there. 
Uh, 64 degrees is definitely likely, and then we hit the rest of the afternoon off into the evening hours. I don't see any problems. Now, this isn't patio type of weather, but at least it's mainly dry. At least you can try to get out to the ball fields and knock out some of those games that you haven't been able to do past few days or even past couple of weeks because all these rainouts. We go off into the night and into tomorrow morning. Not a bad start to the day. You will wake up tomorrow morning with sunshine in the forecast. And look at the biggest difference, the, the change in temperatures. 1 p.m. tomorrow at 68 and today at 58. So that just shows you a big swing of temperatures uh, the next 24 hours. So that rain chance mainly through the southeast. About 2 p.m. is when it starts to really fade. Thursday looks really good. 66 to about 73 degrees. I will take that. That looks just fine. And you better enjoy it. And knock out that yard work, too, because here comes more rain on Friday. Friday's an interesting system, though. The farther east and southeast you are, better likelihood of actually picking up on some heavy rain. I would say if you're in Frankfurt, as of right now, now this is subject to change, but as of right now, I'd say Frankfurt northbound, you're talking about a quarter of an inch of rain. Not much. But if you're down toward Jackson and Breathitt County, if you're down towards, say, Pippa Passes, Knott County, those areas down southeast, you're talking roughly two inches of rain, maybe even more some isolated spots there on Friday into Saturday morning. Keep that in mind. Saturday afternoon actually looks much drier than Saturday morning. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting there, but we still have one more big round of rain to go through where somebody could get absolutely soaked in, like I said, farther east and southeast. That's a better bet. That's a lot of it all yes. of a sudden That's on Friday. Right. Right. All, right. all right. Thank you. We're coming back with sports, and the Cats lose a piece to the puzzle. Dave Baker has sports next. And we'll also check out stocks as we head to break this afternoon. Here's the situation. The major market indicators are up some. As we told you earlier, guard Charles Matthews, the freshman from Chicago, is transferring. UK making the announcement this morning. Matthews played in all 36 games last season, averaging nearly two points, two rebounds a game. His season high was 11 points against South Florida. He started three games this past year. In UK's release, Matthews is quoted as saying, quote, I want to thank the coaches, my teammates, and the Big Blue Nation for all of their support this season. I gained great experience during my freshman year at Kentucky. This was a difficult decision for me, but at the end of the day, I feel like it was in my best interest to explore other options. I appreciate the support Coach Cal has given me in making this decision and the commitment the coaching staff made to me in the past season and beyond. Kentucky will always hold a special place in my heart. Meantime, John Calipari said the hardest thing as a coach is to lose a player that you really want to coach. In Charles' case, I believe he's going to be a productive college player who has the ability to play at the next level. I know Charles' best basketball is ahead of him, and while I'm sad to see him go, I support his decision and will help in any way I can. Well, they won the championship back in March, but last night, the celebration, the end of the year banquet, wrapping up a memorable season for Dunbar, winning a school record 33 games, beating Doss in the title game, the highlight of the night, players, coaches, and staff getting their first ever championship rings. Gunrunner, the third place finisher in the Derby, will not run in Saturday's Preakness. The Louisiana Derby winner would have been one of the stronger challenges to Nyquist, but trainer Steve Asmussen said yesterday morning that he'll pass. Gunrunner will continue training over at Churchill Downs. Asmussen said the cold is in tremendous physical condition coming out of the Derby, and he's planning a serious summer of three-year-old races for Gunrunner. They expect the field of 11 to go to the post in the Preakness. The post position draw is this afternoon at 5. And tonight on the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel, UK's newest football assistant, Matt House, racing analyst Lafitte Pinkai III of NBA Sports, uh, NBC Sports. They used to have the NBA on NBC, but this would be Lafitte Pinkai III of NBC Sports looking ahead at the Preakness and former Wildcat and Dunbar Bulldog and all-around good guy Cameron Mills. That's at 6 on 630 WLAP. Guys, that's a look at sports on this Wednesday. Okay, thank you very much, and we hope you'll keep it right here for a lot more coming up in the next half hour of WKYT News at Noon. An update on a sinkhole that's threatening a home and a road in central Kentucky. It's another weekend. Another moped has been stolen on UK's campus. Coming up at 1230, we'll explain how police are asking students to help with the case. Tonight's Powerball jackpot is $60 million, and Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $187 million.